Sherry Ann Richardson has been kind enough to come in and talk about a book that she has co-authored, one of, uh, I guess, a handful of books that she's already written and are out there and available for people. And Sherry Ann, thank you very much for coming in. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself so we can get started this morning, please. Well, I've been writing since I was 10 years old. I was first published when I was 10, so I guess writing longer than that. Um, I have, in different stages of publication, 20 different books at this point. And um, my favorite book is The Complete Idiot's Guide to Your Own Gardening. That was published <laughs> in February. And um, I did 12 of the 19 chapters in that book and in under three weeks. Oh, my. Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is amazing. So that was real exciting. And um, I'm an avid gardener. I have a greenhouse, and I also live on a farm. And we raise livestock, including the rare Leicester long wool sheep. Oh, my gosh. I did not realize that. Now, why in the world did this become a passion with you? I mean, was this something that was handed down from generation to generation uh, as far as the gardening is concerned? Um, both of my grandparents on both sides were gardeners. Um, my one set of grandparents live on a farm and always raised their own food and canned. And my other grandparents, my grandmother had a rose garden that had the most beautiful roses. And my mother, eh, she had the usual annuals, petunias, geraniums. So they had a small garden, and so one day I found herbs and loved the fragrance, and it just went from there. I, I have to ask before we continue on, what were you writing at age 10 that got you published? Uh, my mother put me in an adult creative writing class, not realizing that it was adults, and they were doing poetry. Oh. And so one of they picked out of everything we turned in, and one of my poems was picked for the book that was published. That's outstanding. You said earlier that this book that you have just had put out, what it's been, what, six months, not quite six months yet yes. that it's come out. Why is this your favorite book before we get into discussing it? Because I think it's something that people don't think you can do. You can garden year-round right here in Indiana. You can grow lettuce all winter. You can grow reddish. I mean, there's just a ton of crops that you can grow and harvest. And people think, oh, it's cold and it's snow, but a little cold frame can make all the difference. And since I like unusual things, that's why it's my favorite book. All right. Delilah Smittle co-wrote this book. Would you tell us a little about her and your association with her? Um, I met her through because of the book. Um, we've never met face to face. She had been writing this book, and when the deadline came, she had turned in seven chapters. And so the publisher had two choices, either find a writer that could complete the book within three weeks' time period or scrap the book. And so a call went out to agents, and I have a friend, another writer, uh, Tom Ogren in California, and he got the offer. And he called me, and he said, this is up your alley. He said, a writer from the Midwest would be great for this book. And he said, do you want it? And I said, sure. And he says, call Janet, which is our agent. And I called her, and I said, I'll take the book. And she said, can you meet the deadline? And I said, I will meet the deadline. And my deadline was on a Tuesday, and I turned everything in on a Thursday night. Did you have to stay up around the clock? I did. I oh. did. I, I, Coke and dark chocolate M&Ms. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. Well, this book, again, and we'll tell you about its availability and where you can get it. Uh, is it through Alpha Publishing? Am I seeing that right? It, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Again, it's The Complete Idiot's Guide to uh, Year-Round Gardening. Now, why the title? Did you have anything to do with that, or was that already predetermined? No, everything was predetermined when I came in. Okay. Um, all I had to do was write. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a title you won't easily forget, but I, no one's insinuating that a bunch of us out there are complete idiots, but I guess... This covers everybody from novice to somewhat expert all along the way. Yes. All right. The The year-round gardening, obviously, is, is the main thing you're trying to push here, right, Sherry? Yes. All right. What If you could take some of the main points out of the book and say, what are the misnomers that people have about, I can't do this because Indiana winters are long and hard, or I can't do this, or the growing season isn't long enough, 
Can you pick out a few examples of maybe some things that you can grow that people think, you know what, there's just not enough time to do that with the weather we have? Um, I have planted tomatoes in April in cold frames outside in the ground. And now they have to be eight-week-old tomatoes. So the best way to know that is to start them yourself. And you will have tomatoes in June. I have done potatoes where you plant them the end of November, clear through the end of December, and you will have those in uh, May, maybe the beginning of June. And you don't have to cover those with a cold frame, just straw. Um, like I said, you can do lettuce all winter long. You know, Now in January, you might have some things that start to die back because January can get really frigid here. But by February, it's popping back. Um, a lot of people that try this, they go out in the mornings and they open their cold frame and everything looks frosted and wilted, and it's going to. And they think, oh, I failed. Go out in the afternoon, 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, open it up. Everything has come back to life and looks just as lush and green as in the summertime. And you can really use this to do those longer crops. You know, get them in the ground, March and April, your eggplants, your tomatoes, your peppers, Keep them in the ground longer. If you don't want to put cold frames up or you can't put cold frames up, run sprinkler systems at night when there's frost expected. The water will keep the frost off the plants and keep them alive. All right. Let's get a further definition. What is a cold frame? Um, okay. <laughs> I'm going to refer to the book here. Oh, I understand. And, <laughs> folks, I want to tell you, and I hope you'll get your own book to look through, I have very rarely seen a book that is so user-friendly what the way it's laid out sherry and I'm, I'm very impressed because it's easy to read it has tips and guides and sections that are kind of set aside from the regular text there are all kinds of pictures and examples uh, i really do like the way that the book is set up for whatever that's worth i think it's easy reading i guess is what i'm saying it is it sure is and you know this is awful Every time I go to look in this book, and I wrote it, um, so I am just going to, okay, right here it is. Okay, a cold frame is a small box-like outdoor structure in which gardeners start or grow plants in pots. The sides may be constructed of wood, plastic, or straw bales. The top must be glass or plastic to allow light into where the plants are. And I'm going to tell you how to make a really simple cold frame that is really cheap that anybody can do. Okay. Get you a frame, whether it's a metal frame. The, we're using plastic conduit, and we put one end into the ground, shove it in as far as we can, and then gently bend it over and put the other end into the ground to make a hoop. Get some 6 mil plastic from Walmart or any place. Throw that over it. Hold it down with brick, rock, or whatever you can get, and you've got a cold frame. It's All that right. simple. Put four bales of straw out and throw an old window on top. That's a cold frame. Wow. I mean, it's nothing complicated. It's nothing that, you know, anybody of any age could do this. In other words, it'll let the sunlight in, but it'll keep some of the nastier elements out yes. if need be. 